Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus. To him be the glory always. Amen. I invite you to take out your notes and follow along. And again, just a reminder as always, to make great devotion during the week. We pray. Heavenly Father, we're asking today you just move in an extraordinary way. Just draw us in. Let your your word speak truth to our heart today. Give us ears to hear your love. In the name of Jesus, amen. We're going to finish up our vacation destination series today. And one of the most popular vacation destinations is a cruise, right? How many people have ever taken a cruise? All right. Uh, I, I have a neighbor who said that uh, they've been over 35 cruises crazy. And I've heard over time, I've heard lots of cruise stories. Most of them are actually pretty good, pretty fun to hear. But every once in a while, you hear a challenging one, like Gilligan. Uh, But there are a lot of cruise stories in the Bible. For example, Noah and his family had a cruise for quite a while. Uh, You had this incredible cruise taken by Jonah. Even the Apostle Paul, we read a little bit, I took a few cruises along the Mediterranean. <clears throat> His were not so good either. But today, today we're going to look at a cruise that the Apostle Peter took and one of these fascinating excursions as part of this cruise that started off really great but didn't always end quite so well. Beloved, I wish that I could tell you that when you become a follower of Jesus Christ, everything goes well. I wish I could tell you that when you give your life to God, it's just smooth sailing after that. But that would be a lie. Uh, 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 Life can be tough, especially for a Christian. Uh, uh, God has never promised us a life free from storms, but he's promised to always be with us in our storm. In In fact, the life of a Christian can be even harder because sometimes Jesus asks us to do some really tough things. Uh, And uh, Jesus even said, and John said, in this world you have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. There's good news, though. (laughs) The good news is, Jesus is always in control. In Matthew 14, it says, immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side while he sent the crowds away. Now, uh, notice it says Jesus made his disciples get in the boat and go on ahead. So, so much for this idea that following Jesus is going to be easy, a life free from trouble. Uh, Because they're only doing what Jesus told them to do. Beloved, just because you may be in a tough spot doesn't mean you are not in the right spot. Doesn't mean that you're not right where God wants you to be. Sometimes following Jesus means facing some storms. Jesus made the disciples get in the boat and go to the other side because he's trying to teach them a deeper level of faith and trust to prepare them for what he has for them as they share the gospel to the world. I mean, this is a cruise with a purpose. Matthew 14 goes on. After he had sent the crowds away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. And when it was evening, he was there alone. But the boat was already a long distance from the land, battered by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now, Jesus is up on this mountain, and he's praying. And and I can imagine Jesus is looking down on the Sea of Galilee, and he can see the disciples struggling in the storm in this little boat. Uh, In fact, Uh, He knows exactly what they're going through. Mark tells us that Jesus saw his disciples straining at the oars because the wind was against them. The point is, the point is Jesus sees you. He knows exactly what you're going through. Now, don't miss this miracle. Jesus is up on the mountain. The disciples are a long way off. It's dark and there's a storm, wind and waves. And yet Jesus sees what they're going through. They're never out of God's sight. That even in the midst of storms of life, when we're struggling, when we feel 
that we're all alone and, and, and we're stuck, we're not going anywhere, wondering if God even sees us, we can be assured God sees us and he knows exactly what we're going through. He sees it all. He knows our situation. Matthew 14. Uh, it goes on, in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea. So uh, we know then that this is between three and six o'clock in the morning. Now the disciples left Jesus on land. They're halfway across the sea and they're in the middle of the storm, middle of this lake. Uh, and uh, certainly they, they've got to be worried, fear, uh, thinking that, that Jesus is way back there, wishing they'd stay with him. And yet Jesus comes walking on the water to them. Jesus meets them right where they are in their point of greatest need. And he demonstrates his power over creation itself and, and the depth of his love and concern for these guys. Uh, Job 9 says, He alone stretches out the heavens and treads on the ways of the sea. Jesus is showing that he is God who walks on the ways of the sea and, and uh, the disciples get it as later on they're going to bow down and worship and confess, truly you are the Son of God. Well, Matthew goes on, though. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. <laughs> it's a ghost. And they cried out in fear. I love that God has such a great sense of humor because, I mean, it's nighttime. The disciples are, are being tossed about in this little boat in the middle of the storm. Jesus comes walking up right next to him. I mean, everything, just everything about that whole scene would be scary. Because uh, they, they weren't mentally prepared for that. And, and Jesus sees exactly what you and I are going through in life. Uh, he's in control. We're never out of his sight. We're never out of his reach. We call out to him. He will come and rescue us. And, and sometimes, just sometimes, that rescue is frightening because he comes in ways that we're not expecting. He comes in ways that, that we are not mentally prepared for or don't expect. It. And yet, and yet, he's always there. Never out of his reach. Psalm 139 says, Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I go to uh, heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. And so, beloved, you may feel that you are caught in a storm of life and you're fighting for every inch and it feels hopeless and it feels dark and maybe, just maybe, even a little scary. But I'm telling you, God is near. He is right there. You are never out of God's reach and he sees exactly what you're going through. So Jesus tries to calm their fears. He says, immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. Uh, well, Jesus will always come to rescue us when we call out to him. Peter decides at this point, it's a great time to take an excursion on his cruise. And so he said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And he said, come. And Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came toward Jesus. But seeing the wind and the waves, he became frightened and began to sink. And he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand, took hold of him, and said to him, You have little faith. Why did you doubt? It's the third miracle in this passage. The first, remember, Jesus sees him in nighttime while they're a long way off. The second one is Jesus comes walking on the water. And the third now is Peter. Peter is walking on the water. Uh, and, uh, and can you imagine what it must have taken for Peter to get out of the boat and step on water, or, or what it must have been like when his foot first touched the water. What are these other disciples thinking at this time? I mean, imagine, imagine how exciting it was for Peter, Peter to be walking on the water toward Jesus. I love that Peter is always saying and doing bold things for Jesus, that he's not afraid to mess up. And that becomes such an encouragement, you know, because I can relate to that. Uh, because uh, he, he's such an encouragement for messed up believers like me who, who are, are just sincerely want to do great things for Jesus and constantly falling flat on our face. <laughs> Amen. 
And so Peter goes from one of the highest points of his life to one of the lowest. He's actually walking on the water toward Jesus. But then he takes his eyes off of Jesus and sees the wind and the waves. Now, the scripture doesn't say this, but the way I picture that happening is he's turning around the boat. Hey, guys, look, look. Anyway, and he gets his eyes off Jesus and he sees the wind and the waves and he begins to sink. And he becomes afraid. And then panic, fear turns to panic, and he begins to go under, and, and he does the only thing he can do at this point. He, he cries out, Lord, save me. It's a great prayer. Jesus will always rescue when we call out to him. And so Jesus reaches out his hand and takes hold of Peter before he goes under the waves, and he said, you have little faith. Why did you doubt? Now, we're going to do a little excursion here, and we're going to learn a little bit about doubt. Uh, doubt causes us to sink. Doubt can overcome faith. James 1 says, but he must ask in faith without any doubting, for the one who doubts is like the surf of the sea being tossed to and uh, uh, being driven and tossed by the wind. The opposite of doubt is faith. When Peter stepped out in faith, man, he was walking on the water. He's so excited. And, and, and then doubt overcame his faith and began to sink. Doubt, doubt comes from focusing on what we see and not on Jesus. Uh, doubt comes when Peter took his eyes off Jesus and he, and he looked around at the storm. Doubt, beloved, doubt comes when we rely on our five senses or on what other people say, or our feelings, rather than, what, uh, than, than focusing on Jesus and his word. Hebrews 11 says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. But if we're going to face storms in life, it's inevitable. They're going to come, and so we need to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus the author and perfecter of our faith. Paul said, uh, uh, Romans, 17, uh, Romans 10, 17, that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. And so we focus on Jesus and we focus on his word. And then um, uh, we're, we're walking faith will not begin to sink because doubt can also be overcome by faith. God loves us even when we fail <laughs> he loves us even in our moments of doubt, when we lose our focus, and even when we begin to sink in life, that he is always there, and we can call out to him, and he will never let us go. In fact, Jesus said that my father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of the father's hand, that he is able to rescue us when we call out to him. That's why Jesus came. Jesus went to the cross, and, and, and when we were sinking in sin and dying, Jesus was lifted up on the cross and died in our place, dying for all our sin, dying for those moments of doubt, moments of rebellion, dying for those moments where we move our focus away from him and his love and his grace, when we focus on the storm, and he died for it all. And then he rose from the dead to save us for all eternity. He rose from the dead to rescue us so that we might be with him. And nothing, nothing can separate us from that love. Nothing can stop him from ever loving you. When Jesus gets into the boat, the next miracle occurs. Uh, Matthew goes on. When they got into the boat, the wind stopped. And those who were in the boat worshipped him and sang... You are certainly God's son. You are certainly God's son. Uh, Jesus loved and cared for Peter when he was sinking. He loved and cared for those who were in the boat, even though they were fighting against the wind and the waves. And he met all of them in their point of need, right where they were, demonstrating nothing but love and care. Matthew goes on. When they had crossed over, they came to the land of Gennesaret, and the men of that place recognized him, and they sent word into all the surrounding district and brought to him all who were sick, and they implored him that they might just touch the fringe of his cloak, and as many touched him 
were healed. Now, I, I love the process that Jesus took his disciples through and how much different it is from this moment. Uh, when, uh, 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 when the disciples first saw Jesus walking on the water, they were filled with fear. It's a ghost. It's a ghost. And, and they lacked faith and they lost focus and filled with fear. Now, these people, when Jesus pulled up, they, were, they recognized him right away. They are filled with excitement. They ran. They got all the people that they could uh, think of who were sick and brought them to Jesus. They go running all over, and, and they, they brought people to Jesus, people who needed hope. And they believed that, that Jesus could change everything if they could just get to him and just touch just the fringe of his garment. And so they came into, to him in faith and were healed. Now, the difference is that Jesus was preparing the disciples for something bigger, to bring the gospel to the world uh, for a more difficult future in the storms that they would face. Now, the other people, the people on the shore, they weren't facing those same stor storms. <clears throat> but in both cases, God demonstrated nothing but love and care and grace and concern for the people. And he met everyone in this account right where they were. Uh, and once again, Jesus demonstrates to these people love and compassion. And he goes about healing all that were brought to him, ministering to their needs. Now, here's the point. Jesus will save all who call to him in faith. The, the, the message is that, that God loves you right where you are, whatever you're going through. Uh, and he wants nothing but the very best for you. He sees exactly what you're going through. He knows you're not out of his reach. Nothing could ever make him stop loving you. And he alone has the power to change your circumstances. You know, uh, when we talk about God, oftentimes we'll talk about the truth that God is, is all-knowing. And he's all-present. And he's all-powerful. And, and those three words really all-knowing, all, all all-present, all-powerful. Those three terms really talk about uh, what we're trying to, to get at today. That first of all, God is all-knowing, and that means that he sees you. He knows your situation. He knows exactly what you're going through, that you are never out of his sight. And, and God is all-present, which means you're never out of his reach. In fact, in fact, Paul said, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, whom you have from uh, who, who is in you, whom you have from God, uh, that, that God is always, always present for you, and that he is all-powerful, which means that you are never out of his reach, never out of his care, never out of his love, and that, his, that he has the ability to change whatever it is you're going through. Jesus put it this way. He said, with people, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. And maybe you're going through a really difficult time right now. Maybe you feel stuck. You're in the middle of a storm. You're fighting for every inch that you can make. And, and it's, been, it's just, just been such a long time. And, and you're wondering if God's forgotten about you, if he's abandoned you because... It, it just seems so, so scary and so dark. And it feels like you're going under and there's no hope in sight. That's when it's time to remember these four truths. Jesus is always in control. He sees you, knows what you're going through. Jesus uh, uh, will uh, uh, always rescue you when you call out to him. And he will never, never, never stop loving you. Nothing can separate you from his love. Even now, in this very moment, he's near, and he's promised, I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. If God gave his son to die for you and me, and he did, then he will certainly rescue us from whatever we're going through right now. If he defeated the greatest enemy of sin and death, all is easy compared to that. And so, beloved, don't lose your focus. Keep your eyes firmly fixed on Jesus, not the storms that come your way. Trust him, believe his promises, and then step boldly into a life of faith. To God be the glory, in the name of Jesus. Amen. And now may that peace of God that surpasses 